You're listening to Cash and Sass. I'm Lisa Marie, your go-to gal for all things money. As the Sassy Wealth Queen and the brains behind the Sassy Wealth Coach, I'm here to take you on a thrilling ride from the financial chaos to sassy and sexy money. Hey, my sassy friend, welcome back to Cash and Sass podcast. And with me today is my friend and one of my long-standing clients, Sarah Suzuki. And I am gonna know I'm not going to do your titles right, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to a little bit about Sarah. Sarah Suzuki has an LCSW and a CRADC, is a trailblazer in recovery and behavior change. And as the founder of Chicago Compass Counseling, she champions identity-affirming change that confronts systematic racism. Known for her invitation to accountability, I so love that, Sarah has spurred transformative change in over 60, 60 excuse me, organizations, including the FBI and major conferences. Alongside Sarah Buino, did I say that right? Buino, yes. Yay! Yeah. Okay. She co-developed the Sarahs, which is a groundbreaking initiative to dismantle white supremacy. In her personal life, she finds balance in a nonfiction writing, serving on the board of Sista AFA Community Care, and cross-country skiing. More than a leader, Sarah is a devoted co-conspirator in systematic liberation. Her primary aim is is to center recovery as the key to equitable and accessible care for all. And one of the things I'm going to say about Sarah is her counseling business is all about recovery. That's where, that's what their niche is, is all about recovery. So Sarah, what I want to start with is you mentioned when I asked you what one of your limiting money beliefs were, was it was good to live in scarcity mindset. And it's, you put, because scarcity keeps you sharp. Mm -hmm. And I find that interesting because, of course, our brain immediately knows that's not true, yet that's where your scarcity mindset stemmed from. Can you go a little bit into that? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, it, I mean, I'm a therapist, right? So... <clears throat> I think a lot of stuff goes back to childhood imprints and experiences. And um, for me, I had this experience of, um, so my mom was a single mom. My dad had a lot of mental illness and part of his mental illness was um, not managing money very well. And her uh, kind of role was to try to raise my brother and me and provide for us. And, um, she often would be very worried about money or um, worrying about how to pay the bills or we'd go over to his house and she would be cutting up credit card offers that were in his mailbox. And so I started to associate worrying about money and being scared of money with being responsible and caring and loving. And, um, and then in contrast, you know, with my idea that my dad just kind of wasn't paying any attention to money, felt like he could spend wherever, whatever, um, that being easygoing about money was dangerous, that that was uh, a path of slipping toward insanity. And of course, I'm saying this in these very reductive terms, but as a child, that was really how I internalized it. My mom had the good mindset. My dad had the dangerous, bad mindset. And, and of course, right, it's, um, it's very imbalanced. And I know that's not true, um, but there's a hypervigilance and a fear that I always brought to money. And it didn't lead to me making good decisions. It really led to me being uh, almost the opposite of what I wanted, more impulsive or making um, these like emotional fear-based decisions or um, like, I think this is a classic example in, in financial, per, personal financial literature. I'd get into credit card debt and then be scared of how much debt there was. And I'd pay it all off at once to like feel better, but then I wouldn't have any cash flow. Um, so my whole scarcity mindset led to this sort of white knuckled fear when it came to money. Um, so I, I, hopefully that kind of explains it a little bit. It does. And what I find interesting is that 
a lot of us have these types of stories, whether they're different or um, some could be the same, but we all have something from our childhood that has stemmed in that has given us that imbalance, especially when it comes to money mindset and money management. And a lot of times, just like you, when you reached out to me and we started working, in a lot of ways, we don't realize it. Or if we realize it, we don't know what the hell we're supposed to do about it, right? Because we were never taught because it came from our generation and it came from the generation before them. And what I loved about it is, is you said that, you know, in some ways you made some good decisions. However, the scarcity mindset prevented you from making wise decisions. And <laughs> me doing DBT years ago, I was like, hey, I know what that meant. Yeah, <laughs> right, um, right. Dialectical behavior therapy, wise mind, where you're bringing in your emotion mind and your, you know, rational, logical mind. Mm-hmm. Um, right, Yeah. right. So what was one of the hardest um, parts of um, managing the money side, the financial side, when you decided to become an entrepreneur? (laughs) Well, I mean, pretty much everything, um, because by the time I became an entrepreneur, um, and also was trained uh, to be a therapist, I had a pretty good idea of my strengths, but another really limiting belief that I had is I don't know anything about money. Um, I'm clueless. Uh, there's no way I could possibly learn it. Um, and, and just that I have no idea what I'm doing. And so, um, I would try to learn about it, but then anybody who would tell me, Oh, well, I know more about it or, I can help you figure it out. I would kind of instantly trust them um, and then not really trust myself. So I just kind of felt like, you know, if I'd read something like, oh, you need to have, um, you need to have an accountant who is uh, filing your taxes. Uh, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I need to find that. Um, Oh, you need to make sure that you've got um, an accounting system. Here's a system you could use. I'm like, all right, let me try that. Um, and so I, I just kind of trusted any piece of advice that would come my way. And, uh, and I ended up with this sort of um, very kind of chaotic functioning, I think, uh, because in my mind, right, it, I could trust everyone and everything except for myself when it came to money, um, except then I, I started having to like trust myself when I was like, huh something seems like wrong. Things are not actually adding up. Um, uh, so I don't know if, I don't know if we want to talk about that part of like our origin story too, you know? Um, Oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Cause I want, and the reason why is because, which is why I love the fact that you're my first guest is because I want the listeners, um, I want my sassy friend to hear and, and Mm -hmm. see for those who watch it on YouTube. Um, to see the transformation that's actually Mm. possible. Because I think, as you know, you know I'm all about sassy money, sassy Mm -hmm. and sexy money. I say it all the time. And we've talked about it several times that I'm about kicking the money taboo to the curb because it's a huge taboo, just like mental health. We won't get on that soapbox today. (laughs) Um, We'll stay on the money soapbox. (laughs) <laughs> but money, I want to kick money taboo to the curb. And so I think it's important for people to hear, mm-hmm. right, where you started and where you're at now, yeah. because there, there's a huge transformation that, that's come across. And I want, I want, I want the, my listeners to um, realize that we don't have to stay stuck yeah. in that cycle. Yeah. So my next question was, um, What was it like with family? Like, Mm. um, like I know your brother's a financial advisor, Mm -hmm. right? And like your mom. And I remember you telling me that, you know, they would try to um, show you things when you were trying to learn it. Yes. But there was this, I want to say disconnect. Right. Right. No, there, there was always, there was, it just always seemed like there was a disconnect. Um, 
<laughs> my mom will even say today, you know, she's like, oh, all your life, like you tried so hard, like you try so hard to like learn and understand it. Um, my brother always seemed to have an intuitive sense about how to understand money. Um, I was, you know, somebody where if we got like a 25 cent allowance, which is wild to think that 25 cents was <laughs> could get you something back in the day. Not long ago. I was going to say, wait a minute. My kids would be like, um, what am I supposed to buy with this? <laughs> I know, it's in a different time. Um, but, uh, you know, my brother would save it and I would just be like, oh, I'm going to get some candy at 7-Eleven. Um, so, you know, anyway, my, my mom would like try and give me tips and pointers and I would try to learn that and, and show her my progress. And, and my brother just, it was so intuitive to him. So he, he has a, a CFO business that, um, they work with different kinds of medium sized companies and, you know, uh, you can certainly look up more about that, but he, he just always understood it. And I think, I think there was just something deeply intuitive to him about finances and money. And, um, and in that way, it was just like, uh, it felt like we were really different people. Like I had this more, I guess, verbal or emotional kind of understanding and he had this more financial understanding. And of course the amazing thing now is, um, and I think a lot of credit to the work you've done with me. We now have gotten to a point of realizing that he and I do the same thing. We really do the same thing where, we are providing this, you know, high level consultation to our clients and we are addressing some of the most challenging topics, um, shame, stigma, fear, things that can bring up so much vulnerability, but to do it in a way that um, gives people skill and illuminates their understanding and helps them live better lives. Um, you know, that that's the magic, right? And I feel like as a therapist or as a consultant, that's always felt like something where I feel pretty confident doing that, but not so with money. Uh, my brother, you know, recognized that for years. And just a, a few months ago, we were actually, I was helping out at, um, uh, he had a stand at one of the, uh, the MAPS conference for his business. He was like, wow, this is, it's amazing to hear you talk about business decisions and strategic investments and financial forecasting with this level of ease that, you know, even just how you are making big decisions, he's like, you have a level of sophistication now that would not have been possible a few years ago. Um, he's like, you've really transformed. Um, and, you know, of course, for me, I admire the journey that he's made in his own self work and his own development and, you know, being, um, you know, doing so much, uh, amazing work. So it's kind of like we've met in this place, um, of similarity, but we both had to seek out the right supports to get there. Um, I could not teach my brother therapy, right. And he could not teach me finance. Right. You know? right, right. Yeah. So, right. so talk about what led you, um, cause you eventually hired people to help yes. you. And I remember that when you came to me way back in, what did we determine? 2017? Yes, 2017. Yes, it yeah. was 2017. And I remember, and I don't normally do this, <laughs> but for some reason I decided that I was going to. You asked for a, I think it was a trial basis. Yeah. Um, and it Tell us what led you to that. Like what happened? What, oh, man. what in the money sphere for you caused that to, to happen? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> this is, I don't know if I've ever told you this. I nicknamed that period of time in my life, like the battle of the accountants, where I imagined like <laughs> this, like Coliseum <laughs> of accountants. And I was telling people, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm just going to get people into battle and whoever, you know, like emerges victorious is the winner. Right. Um, but you know, the bottom and you line, didn't know you were going to, you didn't know you were going to end up with a CFO and a wealth coach. <laughs> no, 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 I did not. I did not. Um, when I came to you, I mean, I, I could, I can just picture the email in my mind. I was like, so suspicious and so fearful and so burned. And I felt so betrayed 
by a lot of really bad advice or guidance I paid for um, my my books, which I had paid someone to maintain or manage my books, were a mess. Um, and I'd had you know different accountants look at it and confirm yes, they're a mess. Um, I had errors with the IRS, uh, with filings, everything was, um, really, it just felt like, you know, I'd let the train totally derail. And, um, and when I thought about it, it was almost like there's a level of attention that I wasn't paying to things because I told myself that I didn't know anything. So I'm just going to, you know, trust people. So I came at you like really distrustful or I'm like, okay, I know you don't offer this, but can we do 90 days and no obligation to me and we'll just do this. And, um, and I don't know, I don't know why you took a chance on me. Cause I came in, I was like really skeptical. Um, but do you want me to tell you what you want me to tell you why? Yeah. Because you, you offered a plan. Oh, <laughs> you didn't come to me and say, I don't want to do this. I just want to mm-hmm. do it. Pay as you go. And I'll make a decision. You said, can we do a 90 day trial? Mm-hmm. You are willing to sign a 90-day agreement and yeah. we do a 90-day trial and then we relook at it. So you came with a plan and I'm right. big on plans, everybody. Okay. I'm like <laughs> super, super big on plans. Um, it's the analytical brain. I can't help it. Yeah. And and the other thing is, is I remember um you told me, um, I have a bookkeeper. And I said, that's fine. I'm not a bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. If you have a bookkeeper, I still need access to your books. What I do is I do money coaching, wealth coaching, and I'm a fractional CFO. So I Mm -hmm. merge those two together because I believe money mindset and money management go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And you were like, okay, look, I've been burned. Can Mm. we do 90 day trial? Yeah. And I was like, because we met. And then you emailed me, we met and I told yep. you my, my thing. And then you emailed me. And so literally you, you took lesson, you took the 24 hours thing about, and you emailed me with yeah your, your thing. And that's the reason why I said mm. yes, because oh, you've wow. been, you had explained that you'd been burned, yeah. right? You weren't trying to take advantage. You were trying to ease your nervous system yeah. and you came with a, okay, I know this isn't a plan you normally do. Right. And right. You know, would you be willing to do this and us relook at it? Now, can you tell everybody what happened 60 days after? Because we I didn't mean, even go 90 days. <laughs> well, like, all right. So like now I'm, it feels so, feels so far. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Now I'm, I'm looking back and I'm like, yes, I came, I came, came to you with a plan because as a fellow professional, right? Because I do see you as a consultant. I I never want to waste someone's time or energy. Here's the other thing. I just I just want to kind of go back to this because it's so common in the field of therapy. There are there are just a lot of people in my profession where we're selling nonsense, right? And so I think that's part of why I, you know, nonsense kinds of coaching. And and I don't want to disrespect, I know lots of amazing coaches who are therapists, but I think that was another thing that, um, you know, I respect people's expertise and, (laughs) and I was like, you know, I'm like, I, I'm, I was just, I was not trusting myself and, 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 you know, but wanting to trust someone. So yeah. Um, now the way I remember it, sixty days in is uh, I. I'm pretty sure I fired my other accountant, and we were moving to another arrangement. But yeah, your book, your bookkeeper, who was the one that had fixed a lot of things, mm-hmm. and you had trusted, and you were, um, but you'd um, let go of the other accountant. Um, we were when I was looking at the books to go over your numbers and look mm-hmm. at the stuff, we were finding that there were things that were misclassified and we were having fixed. And I said, you know, I said, I'm not going to do it. I just want to bring this to your attention because he had told you a couple of times that he was doing a couple of things yes. and you had told me and I brought it to your attention and I'm not doing that to call anyone out. Mm-hmm. My, my point of that is, is that when we started and we built, um, 
And you can tell people, we built your own money roadmap. We built mm-hmm. you a personalized for your business money roadmap. And I talk about this a lot. I think traditional budgeting doesn't work, which is what I told Sarah. Mm-hmm. I believe that you're, you should have a money roadmap that is built specifically for you, your business, and your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And when we were doing that, in the process of doing that and setting up the what I call those virtual buckets, you got really excited because I remember because it made sense to you. You were like, okay, this I can do. Yes. This makes sense. Yep. And we we did. We started off with a new a new agreement. Yes. Now, can you share um what was that like? Um and I remember what happened, I think in, within 60 days after us doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You went and signed. <laughs> uh, you you went. By the way, yes, I'm going to sign a, a six month agreement with you. Oh, and we're yes. moving into right. a bigger yes. office. <laughs> yeah, I signed a seven year uh, massive lease um, to rent commercial real estate in prime Chicago downtown uh, property. And yeah, and I said, I've got a massive lease. Um, I have to, you know put down a $20,000 security deposit, I'm borrowing that money. And I don't know how we're going to fund the rental, but um, that's not on you. This is what we're doing now. Right. And, and, and then this is right where um, I remember you took a look at everything and you said, this is going to be tough. There are going to be times where it's really tough. You're going to like question if you can go on, but we're going to get through it. And, you know, in eight months from now, you'll look back and, and there'll be a pathway. And, yeah, and you, I remember I yeah. warned you that there were going, something was going to, like something was going to pop up mm-hmm. just when you thought it was going good. Something yep. was going to pop up and it yep. was going to get tight. It was yep. going to get really tight. Yep. And, yep. um, but then I reminded you that that's what my OSHA calls were for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. No, it was. I mean, the the timing of um, of you getting, uh, you know, becoming really like a partner in our business um, was so good because, I mean, some people might look at it as like, wow, I suddenly had taken on just with the lease alone. Not not furnishing, but just lease obligation, thousands of dollars a month and additional costs. Mm-hmm. And um, and you know, I was investing uh not just in a 90-day trial with you, but like a very serious let's go all mm-hmm. in um, you know, on money coaching, fractional CFO, all the services, the whole suite. And you know, I can tell you, like, I can think of so many ways that I have wasted money in my life, but not a single penny was wasted in that guidance starting from that Uh point, because I mean, now, right, we're at the, we're at the conclusion of this seven year lease and my business, it not only exists, but you know, it's on the map in a way that would have been unfathomable to me back in 2017. Um, Right. And at the end of the day, numbers are the engine that, you know, shows the stewardship. It drives everything. It, it's, um, it's so, so vital. And I, I guess, you know, I went from kind of seeing money as this like inconvenient thing that I have to think about sometimes and deal with, you know, as a cost of doing business to, you know, being um, a key to like really understanding what's happening with the business and how to resource different initiatives and um, and having fun with it. I never thought that I would have fun thinking <laughs> about big <laughs> numbers or talking <laughs> about things or even like, I mean, right. It's uh, it's just, it's wild to think about how I went from being like very, very frightened to even think of a single bill to being able to look at, you know, some like big decisions and have fun playing with the ways that we could approach it, you know? Yeah. Cause, and that's what I was going to ask you is like, how, how do you feel now compared um, when it comes to money compared to where you were when, you know, in 2017 even, or to, mm-hmm. you know, even, even now compared to like 2018 yeah. when, 
you know, you basically um, started almost over um, mm-hmm. because you you did a um, you did a cleanup is what I call it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> you right. did a cleanup. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Um, and you, yeah. You joined us at a point when the business as an employee uh, based business, because now, you know, we've got 17 therapists and, um, you know, all these different. Um, you know, projects that we do with the, the Chicago area and beyond, right? I mean, it's 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 way bigger than I thought it would be back then. But um, but yeah, when I think about how money was, it's like I I think I was the kind of person where I didn't want to think about money, but I would be logging into my business bank account to look at it and check it multiple times per day. Like I felt like that was like a healthy behavior or it was a way to stay informed. And, um, but you were stressed, you were stressing yourself out doing stressing that, right? myself out. Right. Cause I had this idea that that would help me be more aware somehow. And, um, and you know, there are definitely some, there are definitely some things you have me do. I appreciate as a behaviorist that, um, that I found challenging and you'd say, no, this is, this is actually good for you. And I would be like, all right, I'm going to accept that because this feels really uncomfortable. And I know this is probably good for me. Right. So like times where you would say, wow, um, like when I first started working with you and you're like, okay, how much are you paying yourself? And I'm like, oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay, uh, you got to pay yourself something. And I'm like, well, I'll just, you know, $50 here or there. I mean, that's, I, I really, I mean, I, I feel embarrassed to say that now, but that really was how I was living where I'm like, well, once the business is perfect, then I can like pay myself, I, which again is like. And I, and I love that you said that because <laughs> the fact that you said when the business gets to, because I think that's the mistake that so many of us make, including me, mm-hmm. when the business gets where it, I want it where it's perfect, I'll then start paying myself. Mm-hmm. And the problem with this is, or the issue with this is, as entrepreneurs, the business doesn't ever get to where it's perfect right. because we're going to constant, we're, we're constantly changing it yes. and we're up leveling and no offense, but shit happens. Yep. Life happens. Yep. And if you wouldn't have started paying yourself before less, well, let's just bring it up. COVID happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and everyone has to realize that we can't wait for it to be perfect mm-hmm. for us to start paying ourselves. Right. So I want to ask you a question because n- Will you say that, do you consider yourself more empowered now with your money versus then? Like when you look at your Mm -hmm. bank account now, Mm -hmm. um, does it stress you out as much uh, or as, yeah, as much as it did before? Mm -hmm. And do you feel more empowered or what's different? Oh, I mean, I feel way more empowered and the, the striking difference was so uh, this year, actually, my husband and I bought our first house. And I was um, going to ask how it affected your personal life, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, right. Uh, yeah. Pre working with you, right? My, uh, my husband and I were in financial couples counseling because, yeah, I not paying myself had an effect on our marriage, right? <laughs> it had an effect on our well being. It had an effect on, you know, my sanity, to be honest. Um, well, so, and, and both of you, here's the thing. We as humans, especially women, aren't taught to talk about money. Mm-hmm. And men will talk about it a certain way. Right. And then when you put a man and a woman to talk about it, we end up beating heads most of the time, mm-hmm. right? And that becomes an issue. And when you were telling me, you know, my husband and I were in, we're in financial counseling because we need to learn how to talk about money and we're doing this. Yes. And one of the things that we would discuss is, is your mindset around mm-hmm. it so mm-hmm. that you could go in yeah. and come from a different perspective because oh I was gosh. like, okay, well, Sarah, one, you're not paying yourself. Mm-hmm. And two, in order for the conversation to change, your yep. mindset has to oh flip. My gosh. It's so true because, because I had this, you know, mistaken belief from childhood that, you know, being, 
fearful and stressed out about money is a sign of love, I would approach Jack by being like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do about this or this bill? Which, you know, that that's not like, um, that's not a very relaxing way to start a conversation, right? Um, but no, so, you know, we were able to um, buy a house that was the right place at the right time and to really execute on that decision. Um, despite, I think I, you know, even some fears that he had about, you know, can we do it? Does it make sense? Because the same things that you taught me to do with the business, I was doing with our personal finances too. And to be honest, um, I went from being like this, like scared, worried, I don't know, what are we going to do to, you know, I do our taxes, I do our financial accounting, benefit selections, all that stuff. And, you know, and he, he gets our groceries and cooks a lot of our dinners. I can smell him cooking dinner right now. And it's wonderful, <laughs> right? Um, but but I can talk with him in that calm, organized, reasonable way that I'd like to imagine I talk to my clients, you know, therapeutically or organizationally, um, because I actually can look at numbers without seeing them as a personal attack, see them as information that I can use. Um, and it's just so interesting, Lisa, because you you mentioned how my group does this like recovery informed work um, in so many areas that are stigmatized. But I really built my own personal brand around helping men moderate their drinking um, who are having problem drinking. And there's so much shame and so much fear um, that people have when it comes to drinking and that men have when it comes to talking to a therapist and then combine that with drinking. And it's this whole thing. And I found it really easy to create this like very, you know, I still do this very safe space to like look at the numbers and think about it and think about strategies. And that's definitely, it's the same thing that you do with me. And I was coming from that place of, you know, just like a lot of my men where they're like, I don't think I need to go to rehab, but I need something and I need, and I don't really know what it is. and. Um, it's just, it's so nice to have a partner and change. who can be like, let me take a look, let's break it down. And unlike my other bad advisors in the past, you weren't trying to dress up or hide tough realities. I I basically told you what I was going to say. That's the (laughs) sassy part. And I respect that. I respect people who can say, Hey, Here's what's going on because business owners, we don't have time for people to be dancing around realities or trying to, the, we do not want people hiding tough realities, right? Um, I remember when um, you first hired, when she first started coming, you told me, there's nothing wrong with my mindset. I just don't trust anyone. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we got to talking and I went, nothing wrong with your mindset. My I know. Ass. No, I was and just I like my guys. I was, you know? like, I was like, um, and then I remember mm-hmm. when we were talking about like, you know, um, the spending, like where was certain things going mm-hmm. and we were looking at it and I remember looking at it and I was like, okay, I'm just going to have to tell her. And you know what? I don't know if she's going to fire me or not because I, mm. I I knew I wasn't going to like pussyfoot around, right? Mm-hmm. I wasn't right. going to tiptoe. Right. And and I say that, but I come from, I always come from love. Yeah. I always say it with love, but you're right. I, I didn't hide it. I said, Sarah, this is what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. This is where your money's going oh and yes. you need to make it stop. Yep. You know, yeah. you've got people doing this and this, and yep. this is where one of your other money leaks are. You've got to, you've oh got to make gosh. it stop. And I mean, I that's what, you- that's what somebody wants though, right? Like I want someone who is saying, Hey, you know, check the engine. Here's the thing. Right. And, um, no, I mean that I trust people who can tell me the tough realities. And that's one of the hardest well, things for us to get when we're right. in. Right. Leadership positions, running right. our own businesses is to get honest feedback from anyone, you know? Well, and I also think it's really hard because, you know, um, 
when you're in a dire state or when you're in a rough spot mm-hmm. and you don't have a lot of money investing, mm-hmm. um, a lot of money to invest in help or whatever. And I remember you telling me, um, and I was, I think it was a couple of years ago. So mm-hmm. it was in our five year mark that, you know, you said, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have a lot of trust mm-hmm. and I still invested. And that's really important because mm-hmm. I, it was time to invest in someone that would actually have my back. Yeah. And I think that's really important, whether yes. it's a wealth coach or a therapist or yeah. a business coach or, you know, a marketing, whatever it may, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. Right. I think it's really important to honestly sit and think about it and go, yeah. okay, this will cost me this now. Yeah. And what would my outcome be if I don't wait? Right. Or what would my outcome be if I do wait? Yeah. And, you know, I believe that your outcome is so much better because you didn't wait. Mm -hmm. And I'm not tooting my own horn on that. I'm just, I'm saying because was it all, and for everyone, for all my sassy friends out there, (laughs) was it all bed of roses the last seven years that we've worked together? I know, but right. That's and I'm I'm glad that you are using the the accurate term CFO because that's the thing is you've been in the C suite with me, right? And when you get into the executive suite, it's not all like, oh, everything's just fine. Like that's it's that's real. It's not all roses, right? We're looking right. at real big things. But I think, you know. Again, I don't have any regrets about the decision that I made to bring you on. I think, um, you know, whenever somebody's like wondering about whether or not it's worth it to bring in a CFO or a wealth advisor, um, I think I had the same kind of idea that, oh, well, that's someone who tells me that I can spend $500 on Facebook ads and I, oh, I spent too much here or asks for it you know, W9 and, or they just file some, you know, expenses. And that's, that's not what it is at all. Right. It's like, we spend a lot of time doing strategic operational thinking that informs like major decisions. Like I can think of the major decision points in the life of the business over the past seven years. And you've been involved in every single point. I see you smiling, but I'm like, it's, you know, For me, it's a really strange thing to say out loud because when I brought you on, I didn't think, I didn't think like, oh yeah, that'll be, we'll be in this, you know, like executive partnership together. I eased eased you, I eased you in. You did. did, Since I was having, since I just had a trust problem. You, you you had a huge trust problem (laughs) and then you were like, okay, I'm going to take the chance, but you were Mm -hmm. still, that nervous system was still there. Right. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're going to have to do baby steps and we're going to have to ease her in. And so I, I eased you in Mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and I think it's really important that, you know, when you hire a coach, um, or a therapist or, um, you know, an advisor, anybody mm-hmm. that there's someone who's going to get you yeah. right. And who's going to take the time to know you and your business and your mm-hmm. lifestyle. Yeah. And when I first met her, she was living in Chicago yeah. a year ago. It's not been quite a year. She informed <laughs> me she was moving somewhere even colder. Um, <laughs> and I told her she lost her mind. Um, <laughs> I also remember, was it before COVID or after COVID yeah. that you text me panicking because all of us down here in the the South and the mm-hmm. East Coast were experiencing, and, and it, I think it was a couple of years ago, we had these big, huge, major hurricanes oh, yeah. um, and they were popping up everywhere. And I laugh about it because <laughs> she texts me and she goes, Oh my gosh, are you okay? What? You know, I just, I need to pick you up and just move you Midwest. And my comment was, no. And I was like, there's only one issue with that. And she said, what? And I said, you get snow and yes. you get a lot of snow. I'll take the hurricane and the tornadoes. Thank you. <laughs> um, and and it was it was a really bad storm. The winds were, you know, this year we've had a couple, but they weren't nearly as bad as yeah. what you had had you'd seen that year. And and it's like it it um, takes turns. But the point is, is we 
we got to know each other, yeah. right? So much so that she was realizing that something was happening on my end of the world, mm -hmm. just like when something's happening over there, yeah. Yeah. Um, the one year y'all got like tons of freaking snow in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I know y'all are used to snow, but this looks like a blizzard, you know? And I text you and I was like, okay, are y'all okay? You know, because again, that's the point is you want someone who cares about you, your yeah. business and your lifestyle. And when she told me she was moving, again, we yeah. I immediately yeah. went into strategic strategic planning mode yeah. with her. Right. And I said, okay, we need to plan, right? She mm -hmm. said, yes. These are the things that I'm thinking of. These are the issues I'm having. What can we do? And yeah. we sat down and mm -hmm. we planned. Yeah. And because we did that, mm -hmm. it made the move a lot oh my gosh. Um, less stressful and a lot more um, seamless yeah. so that you and your husband could buy a house. Yes. No, I mean, I, again, it was, uh, it was really just uh, so surprising to experience how smooth all of that was because, you know, I was not looking forward to an out of state move and, you know, it was kind of dreading all of it and it ended up being wonderful. Um, but I think it says a lot that I don't know if you've ever in any of our calls, like video calls, like seen Jack or talked to him or said hi. I don't even know if he's passed in the background. I actually think one time you did, you had uh -huh. him before y'all moved. You uh -huh. had him um, come in and say hi to me so that I could be introduced because um, I think it was during the time y'all were um, doing some of the counseling and I I don't remember what it was I said, but mm -hmm. I'd given you some advice and you're like, oh my gosh, you're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to come from this. And when you did that yep. and he said, yes. wait a minute. And you were like, he was like, wait a minute, where'd I come from? And you was like, my wealth coach, my chief financial mm -hmm. officer, yeah, she Lisa, was, we yep. were talking in this and he goes, and he got, and you were like, you know what? You need to meet her. <laughs> Seriously. Um, well, I mean, it says a lot that yes, there's that one time, but Jack loves you. Like I, <laughs> he, you know, he attributes significant improvements in my confidence, in my well being, in just even like, He'll look back and think like, oh man, I, he's like, I remember how chaotic, you know, uh, your approach was to business. And he's like, now you talk about these decisions and it's like really informed. And, you know, I think it's, um, it's just, it's very reassuring to him, but I think that says a lot, you know, that he knows the impact that you've had and, um, and has seen that with our team too. I mean, I don't think anyone on my team has ever gotten to like meet you in person or talk to you for a prolonged period of time. But people know uh, how important your guidance is. And they'll say, oh, yeah, well, you know, like, uh, what would Lisa think about this? Or I'll say, oh, yeah, Lisa said we did a great job with this. And they'll say, wow, that's, that's amazing. If I give like an affirmation, they're so happy because they know that you are keeping it real, you know, um, and, uh, and they really respect how we've been able to flourish and grow and even how you were there for our whole team. And I don't, it's, it's late at night. I'm like, I don't want to tear up thinking about this, but I just think about how you were there for my team in 2020 when we were going through, you know, just a oh huge gosh. upheaval. And at the time, every one of my staff was a person of color and we all were, just maxed out with what was happening with George Floyd in the summer of 2020. And I remember reaching out and saying, Hey, like how much can we pay everybody to just have a week where we don't have to come into work and we can just have one meeting and check in with each other. And you were like, I'll do the math right now. And you had that figure to me. In, I, I think I had that figure to you in a couple of hours because I was going to say my you know, memory was like 10 minutes. Because then yeah, we talked with my team. Y'all had y'all yep. had been working nonstop. Yes, doing the virtual. Y'all been going. No, I mean, just nonstop. Yeah. Because of course, your niche. You had so many people who all yep. of a sudden w couldn't go out anywhere. Yep. Who couldn't do anything, and they were right. wanting to go back to those you know bad mm -hmm. habits. And y'all were just 
you were burnt out. We were so and we maxed were, out. We were nowhere near the end. And then yeah. you add George Floyd to mm-hmm. on top of that. And y'all all were feeling it. And you 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 emailed me. I think you actually texted me. I think I texted you. Texted you. Me. Cause it was like, well, I did. was just in a Google you chat with my me team. And, yeah. and you said, you know, Hey, look, I know it's in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. What do you think? And I said, I'll run the numbers right now. Yeah. Give me, you know, give me a few minutes. And I think yeah. it, I think I did. I think it was within a 15 minutes that I got back to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and it's like, and to this day, that was one of the defining aspects of, you know, the culture of our group. And and you have been so patient and kind with me with other things where I'll be like, oh, I want to be generous in this, you know, kind of way where I'm like, <laughs> okay, this past, you know, like uh, Juneteenth, I'm like, let's give everybody the holiday and let's implement PTO, you know, in advance. And uh, I think I want to do it. I've already made the announcement. And you're like, okay, well, <laughs> we'll figure out how to incorporate that. And you still, you keep my feet planted on the ground with, how to make it work. And I just, I really appreciate that about you, that you, you accept what's important to me. Um, you know, even if, uh, it might not necessarily be how you would personally go about with the business, you really take time to understand how I want to create a culture and a company and what's important to my team. And, um, and yeah, I mean, that, that really was, um, that was the thing that really synced it all up for our team and our whole identity. And again, you were at the center of that. And I could go to my team and say, Hey, look, again, everybody's clinicians of color. I'm like our amazing white accountant who is our CFO is setting aside this fund for us so that we can take a week and we can just like, you know, Just connect breathe. with each other. We, call, yeah. we called it a mental health week. Yeah. Y'all could connect yeah. with each other and you could just yeah. disconnect from everything else. Yeah. Yeah. We decided we were giving everyone a paid mental health week is what we were doing. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I whole honestly, staff appreciated I be- that. Yeah. But, and I also believe though, that that's what helped y'all get through the rest of 2020 yeah. because it was just hitting your staff really hard. And I think it's also important that, um, you know, not only are you wanting to make a difference in other people's lives that way, but you speak on stages and you mm-hmm. write things like you write things to get y'all. She gets grants. Okay. She has grants awarded to her. Like I've actually told her that I'm in, I'm in awe of she can, the stuff that she writes is amazing. And she is, she is so how passionate I am about money taboo and mental health taboo, because I do have a daughter who has a mental health disorder. Mm-hmm. She is just as passionate about systematic racism mm-hmm. and the mental health that mm-hmm. she goes and talks on stages, right? <laughs> and, and I mean, she gets big wigs to, to change how they're doing things and she downplays it. And I just think it's really important that, a lot of the work that you've done with your money and your money mm-hmm. mindset has been able to lead you to be oh. able to get these grants and yep. get on these stages so that you can make the impact yeah. that you want to make. Because when I started working with you in 2017, that wasn't something you, you always yeah. wanted to do something about it, but you never really saw that you were going to be on stage yeah. making those kinds of impact. Right. Well, right. Because as long as there's this, huge area of like fear and shame and, you know, feeling ignorant or feeling like a fraud, right? I I couldn't put myself out there to talk about like a third rail issue, like racism, right? Um, and, And now I can go on stage and I can talk about things that, you know, are very affecting for people. And I it is really important to me to use the platform that I have to advocate for the world that I want, you know, my nieces and their children and their children's children to be able to live in. Um, But I wasn't able to do that when I had all that fear and contraction to protect um, or that I wasn't ready to deal with. And, and yeah, it's kind of like, well, if I can be, authentically myself if there's nothing for me to hide 
then yeah, I can go on a stage and talk with anyone about anything, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's really interesting how I think for a long time, you know, I just thought of, you know, money and finances is something kind of separate for me for someone else to think about somewhere else. And I think a lot of us unconsciously do that. Um, and, uh, and I didn't realize that the feeling of like increasing mastery and understanding would be enjoyable, that it would actually make me feel a great sense of enjoyment. Like I don't obsessively go into, you know, my business bank account anymore. I can go into QuickBooks and, you know, run a PL and understand that and run a comparative analysis. And I, you know, can pull my own like tables of things and, um, you know, different financial forecasting and, um, and actually have fun with that and then make slides about it. I mean, again, I never would have pictured that I would feel comfortable doing something like that a long time ago, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, I guess this is like, I know it's kind of like a love fest, but I'm like really glad to, you know, have the, have the chance to like be your first guest on this. And then also I just think there's so many people there's so many people like me, right? Where I had a dream and a vision and anywhere I go, I walk into a room and I look confident. People say I come across as having um, some authority. It seems like I know what I'm doing, but I had this one thing that I felt like I just didn't know anything about with money. That was like my big secret. And I and I just didn't even know how to get started with it. Right. And, um, I think there are just so many people out there where that's like, it's like this key that can unlock the full potential of our business vision, but we, we just have to have that partner in change who can mm -hmm. see that vision with us and like be that co-conspirator like you, like you're a badass co-conspirator in change. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up. And so I think from that, what I want um, my sassy friends to take away from it is I know personally how hard it can be to ask for help. And I know Sarah knows as well. And, and I want to encourage you that if you're feeling stuck, Whoever it is, whatever, in your business, in personal finances, business finances, marketing, whatever it is, I promise you the best way to get unstuck is to ask for help because there are people who are good at it and having a partner in crime. <laughs> Change. A co-conspirator. A, a co-conspirator. <laughs> I guess we are right in the crime of yeah. living our dreams. <laughs> Exactly. You know, to have a co-conspirator to see your vision and then be able to help you get there, you're going to get there faster. So as we sign off, I'm going to also say that if you are ever looking for a speaker, I'm going to get her website from you. I'm going to make sure it's in the show notes. Y'all go check her out because she is an awesome, awesome speaker because I've actually seen it because she sent me a recording of one that she did. And she's amazing. And thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your story and sharing and being vulnerable about your um, journey because this is what cash and sass is all about is us being vulnerable and talking all things money so until next time see y'all later thank you thanks for joining us this week on cash and sass check us out on social media and on our website at www.thesassywealthcoach.com where you can download my free money story start guide the website again is www.thesassywealthcoach.com. And as always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh content. And remember, yes, it is possible to have sassy and sexy money. See you next week.